Hi, this is Tom Bazzini of Essential-Skills.com. Um, I want to talk to you today about the brain, and especially how brain chemistry pertains to personal change, all right? And, you know, chemistry and structure, all right? And how the brain, when it's working well, uh, how the brain works well together so that everything's working in the same direction, um, how when it's not working well, how specifically it's getting in its own way, and how to actually repair the problem when things aren't going the way you want them to go. Because, you know, everybody is wherever they are and they have where they want to be. You know, whatever your potential is, the answer to unlocking that potential is in your brain. So, um, you know, very simply, we have two parts of the brain that I want to talk about in the context of this. We have the creative adaptive part of the brain here. We have the reactive part of the brain in the center. And then there's a layer in the middle. Okay. So, um, all input from the outside world gets shunted through the middle part of the brain, the, that, the jelly layer. You know, all kinds of input. All right. When things are going well, when things are going correctly, uh, the signal from that part of the brain gets balanced. Part of it goes up to the creative adaptive, part goes down to the reactive, all right? The result of this is you get basically a balanced behavior or a balanced outcome because you've engaged both parts of the brain, creative adaptive, when you have billions and billions and billions of, of interactive or, or, or cells interacting connections, okay? Um, and the primal, which basically doesn't do much more than react, okay? So we've got adapting and reacting, working together, moving you forward through your life, and getting an outcome. All right, now, where do you run into a problem? Problems look more like this, okay? May not be identical, but they're more like this. We have the primal reactive part of the brain, okay? All right. We have the jelly layer, we have the creative adaptive. Okay, what tends to happen when we run into problems is we get this input from out here, it goes to the jelly layer and generates a reactive response without any interaction of the creative adaptive part of your brain. Okay, basically what I call it is basically the sea tiger run response. You know, back before we had houses and civilization, okay, Sea tiger, danger, survival response, run. The faster that happened, the faster that mechanism kicked in, the more likely you were to survive. If you saw a sea tiger, let's think about our decision for a while, okay, and then decide whether we should run or not. By that time, you generally ended up being dinner for a tiger. It's not real helpful. So the speed at which this works in that context was good, okay? In day-to-day -day life, it isn't. And the reason is quite simple. We're having survival responses in areas where our life is not really threatened. Whether it's things like public speaking, we're having a sea tiger run response to public speaking, or sea tiger run response to asking someone out on a date, or sea tiger run responses to uh, asking for a raise. The whole idea that, that we're having these reactive primal responses to, to things that are no real actual danger, let us know that we've got a disconnect here. We've got, you know, this was a really good, good thing in its context, but in real life, it's, in the life we, world we live in today, unless you happen to actually be in the jungle, this is no good, okay? So, um, and to be fair, it can go the opposite direction as well. You can also have an input and go up to the creative adaptive area and have this disconnect. And what happens there is you sit there and just perpetually plan what you would do if someday you actually made a move. Okay? It's not as common, but everybody's, I mean, I've had those times. I mean, I get by them, but you kind of know. You guys who are perpetual planners and perfectionists and never move, the reason is quite simple. It's because you're not tapped in to the primal part of your brain, the movement initiating part of your brain. So, what do you do to solve this problem? 
Okay. Well, we've got this primal reactive response. Okay. The key to making change is to engage both parts of the brain again at the same time. Now, the way to do that is to basically what we're talking about is reinitiating brain plasticity. It's a, you know, people all hear about plasticity and everything as if it's real new, but the concept of plasticity has been around for quite some time. Okay? When your brain enters a plastic conditioner, it becomes very, very pliable. And the things that makes that condition occur is when novelty and emotion Anytime there's a novel, novel event with emotion, you're generating plasticity, okay? Um, so what do you want to do? So you're having this uh, see tiger run response. Boom, tiger, boom, run. All right, what you want to do is you want to interrupt that process. And the way you interrupt that process is very, very simple. Uh, oops. Uh, it's very simple. What you want to do is you want to identify the driving emotions, the driving associated emotions that are pushing the sea tiger run response. So normally, you know, it goes in here, it goes to the joy layer and gets pushed in. You have a group of associated states that identify this behavior. Okay, so basically let's say if it's, you know, fear, doubt, anxiety, or uncertainty, uh, vulnerability, helplessness, whatever those are. But identifying what that what that combination is helps generate a condition of plasticity because it's not, now now you've now you've isolated this now you want to reinitiate it all right so how do you do that well you find what we call a resource event now what's important this is different than finding a resource state so a lot of things so you, like you want to take happiness and excitement or euphoria and smash them into misery and make the misery blow away when it that just doesn't work okay so <laughs> What you want to do is you want to get events, for instance, if I talk about I'm sitting on the ocean watching the sunset. I like the ocean, I like the sunset. Okay, what's unique about that? Well, what's unique is that the outside part of the brain is, is connected. Every part is connected to every other part. It's like a mesh net that's folded on top of each other, you know, 10,000 times for billions and billions of connections. So basically what you end up with is there's the event, there's the ocean, the sound, the smell, uh, what thoughts I'm having at that time, what emotion I might be having, you know, the water temperature, the sand, anybody I'm with, anything I see, all of these things become part of the event, okay? It's all stored out, creative, adaptive, that part of the brain, okay? That part of the event, and they're all interconnected. Now, here's the key. When you activate this, at the same time as you activate that, it actually takes the connections and actually reinitiates balanced thought function because you're activating both parts of the brain at the same time. You've initiated a condition of plasticity. You've got the brain ready to change. You've got it pliable. Now you've got, <laughs> it looks like quite a mess, doesn't it? It was a mess before, now this is better. So you've got this pliable thing and you've reinitiated the brain going back into a balanced condition where you have, now you have this input, again, whatever it is coming in, balanced position, balanced result. Now, how do you do that? Well, we've come up with a process called the 3D mind. We'll be teaching it this October in London. On the, from the 1st till the 5th, and how to use it to improve every part of your life in order to reach your potential. But for this, the, the important part about this is understanding this brain model, understanding how this functions and why this is the most desirable, balanced condition that you want the brain in, and how to get it back to that condition. If you have any questions about this or any other part of the process that we've talked about, the separation of the brain, you know, between the primal and the creative adaptive, the sea tiger run response and why that's such a problem, and how to reinitiate this process to get the brain back into a balanced state, to reinitiate plasticity and get you 
back to the place where you can get the life that you want and the life you deserve without all the problems getting in your way. This is Tom Bazzini and my partner, Kim McFarland, from EssentialHyphenSkills.com. Feel free to leave a comment.